Hello everybody. We're going to look at references and citations in academic articles today. So first of all, we want to know why do we need them? Why do we need references? What is their purpose? Their purpose is to show the sources of the information that the author used when doing the research and when writing the article. When an author does not cite his source, he's plagiarizing. And what do we mean by plagiarizing? Well, if we take a look here, we can see we're taking it and copying it. We're actually stealing another author's language or thoughts or ideas or expressions, and we present them as our own original work. It's not something we can do when we publish, uh, public, publish our, our research and certainly not something that we would do when we're writing an, a paper for university. So we need our references to show the sources of our information. So references, what and where. And here we see some examples of references. They are the list of sources used by the author, and they usually appear at the end of the article in alphabetical order. And we can see here A's and then move down to B's. So it's easy to find a, the full reference of a article. So what's in information is there? Well, first of all, the authors. And we see here our authors in red. And we see there are one, two, three. Last name, first initial, middle initial. Last name, first initial, middle initial. And we ask ourselves, why in this order? Is it alphabetical? Well, it appears so, but it isn't. It's actually an order that the authors decide. The first one is usually the lead or the head author and researcher. Next, we have the year of publication, in this case, 2003. The title of the article or the book, Drinking, Cannabis Use and Driving Among Ontario Students. And then we have the name of the journal, the volume or issue, the Canadian Medical Association Journal. We see they've abbreviated and written it short this way. We see the volume or issue is 168. And we have the page numbers. It's on page 565 to 566. It's a short article. So when we look here again, we can see we've, who wrote the article. We've got our authors. When was it published? The year 2000. What journal? Drug alcohol dependence. And the page and pages, 197 to 204. It always appears in this order. It's a set order. Everybody knows it. Everybody uses it. And then we have citations. Well, what are they? They show the source of the information in the text itself. So we see here all of this red. These are the citations. It's telling the reader that the information before it came from these sources. So we have a beginning sentence. We know a considerable amount about the role of alcohol in MVCs. So this research, these articles, is where the author got his information and can clearly state that we know a lot about the role of alcohol. The same here. This has resulted in, in the publication of a number of governmental reports on drugs and driving in Canada. And we see, again, here where he got the information about Canada, and where he got the information for the United States, U.S. Department of Transportation, England, the Department of Environment, Scotland, and Australia, and other nations in the European Union from here. So we know exactly, if we want to go back and read more, find out, we can go back to these sources. And they always appear in the body of the text. So again, we look here, we have our authors, we have our year, we have our authors, et al. What is et al? Well, 
if we had, maybe there are many, many authors. So when there's more than two authors, we write et al. Et al means all the other authors. It's a short way. Sometimes the author is mentioned in the early 1970s, smart. That's the name of the author. And then we put the citation, the year, 1974, studied self-reported cannabis use. So I can go back to the list of references at the end of the article, find SMART's article from 1974, and get the full reference. So we can see the connection. Here we have the citation, Bates and Bla Blakely, 1999, and here we have the full reference. Bates, Bakley, 1999, the name of the article, the name of the journal, and the other information. Sometimes we have direct quotes, and when we have a direct quote, we need to put in the page number. So, as O'Malley and Johnson, 2003, that's when the article was published, the quote comes from page 311, and then we put quotation marks around the quote. So it's clear that these are the exact words of O'Malley and Johnson. Today, we get more and more of our information from the internet, from various websites. So we have to put that in as well. So it follows the similar kind of format, the author, the date, and here we often have the not only the year but also the date, the name of the article or the name of the website, and we add retrieved from. That means we got it from, and we have the URL. And the same here. We sometimes don't have the author, so we write the name of the article, we write the date, and again, retrieved from. And in that way, we cite, we say where we got our information from the internet. So even if it's on a website, we can't just copy and paste. If we do so, we need to cite the source. So remember, when you're reading, when you're writing, use references, use citations.